Uh, it's another K Rock football Zoom meeting. We haven't done a lot of these recently because we've got back to some sort of normality. But in terms of local footy, it is a bit hard to catch up one on one with people. But in this case, it's actually two on one because I have the co coaches of the reigning Premier St. Mary's. I get to be reigning Premier for two years. I do speak of Travis Robertson and Glenn Keese. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us on K Rock Footy. Thanks, thanks for having us, Kingy. Keese, I suppose I'll go to you first because. It's almost five months to the day since uh, your cardiac arrest. Uh, I'm guessing everybody will probably want to know how you're tracking five months along. Yeah, you're right. You're not, it's five months, uh, less one day. So, um, yeah, no, going well, mate. Um, yeah, it, life is pretty much back to normal. So, um, yeah, I suppose everything seems to be back. I was thinking about it today, thinking everything's back to normal except for footy. So, um, it'd be nice to get that back into some, some sort of swing, for sure. How often does it cross your mind, the incident on a day? Do, is it starting to get to the point where you don't think about it as much or does it still dominate the, the front of your mind? Uh, no, not really. It, it's, um, yeah, I, I, I have no recollection. So um, in terms of the event or how it happened or the lead up to it. So, um, yeah, for me, it feels like a distant memory. Obviously, it's been interesting, you know, going through the times we all have of seeing people for you know, months at a time. So constantly running back into people for the first time at work and having to, you know, talk to, talk talk about it, talk about the story and so forth. So um, get reminded about it quite a bit. But um, in terms of me personally thinking about it, no, it's sort of, um, you know, in many ways gone to the back of my mind. I suppose the first few days at work, you probably would have just spent the whole time just fielding questions about it and not much work would have been done. Yeah, look, um, I suppose had the beauty of probably easing back into it. So it sort of um, happened over, you know, initially it went back a couple of days a week. So, um, you know, certainly work were awesome and have been fantastic through the whole process and encouraged me to be, take it pretty slowly. So, um, but yeah, the last probably two, two and a half months have been back five days a week and, and um, yeah, it's been good fun and business in good shape. But, uh, yeah, it's good fun. Oh, fantastic. Good stuff. All right, well, we'll leave your health issues there. Keith, to your former health issue, you've moved on nicely from it. Let's talk a little bit of footy. Gentlemen, it has been a bizarre old year. We tried to get up and then we didn't get off the ground. And now we look to 2021, but we still don't know what that looks like. But as a footy club, Robbo, you're starting to put some plans in place to ensure that you, you stay at the peak of your powers. Yeah, Kingy, obviously 2019 didn't quite work out how we how we planned and we tried pretty hard for that, um, but eventually uh, succumbed to sort of second lockdown. Um, in terms of what, we, what we've been doing, obviously, like most clubs, you read about uh, where they've been on the journey over the last few, few months. It's been certainly about uh, signing their current lists up. I think um, recruitment's still a bit hard with a lot, certainly the top-end talent with the unknown of VFL and AFL, but... We've been doing the same in terms of our playing list, but uh, we've really put a focus in on um, setting up our coaching structure throughout the club, uh, really conscious of our development requirements, uh, certainly around points and salary caps and where they might look like in the future, and also uh, accommodating what we know is a really strong young list, and that's certainly going to continue over the years. Uh, we've got a really strong junior program, so we're really... Uh, looked looked at what we can do to to make our club better um, and and set ourselves up for continued um, success and that doesn't necessarily mean premierships that means developing good young men um, in our, into our program and um, we've got, yeah, a couple of things we could probably talk to tonight on on that and what that all means. Okay, so how long has this been in the development for? Oh, we probably in in actual fact part of it was set in place for um, 2019, where we talked about our development program. Uh, we, we, we knew we wanted to spend more time in sort of that 17 to 22 year old bracket that we could, we could give them a little bit more time and um, perhaps some more craft and, and developing their, their skills faster. Um, and, we, and we'd identified Scott Selwood to do that. And then really COVID came and um, you know, he, he, he'd set up a really good program that we were really happy with. Um, but then, um, yeah, COVID came and Collingwood, things changed and we just didn't get access to that, so we had to park it. Um, so we've parts of it been in play for a while, um, but we've probably yeah, just um, tinkered with it and feel really comfortable that we've added added some good good value. Uh, 
take us through Keisty and Robbo together. What does it What does it look like, Keisty? Talk to us about the structure and how it will work. I believe you, you know, what's traditionally been called a reserve grade side. You'll you'll have a different name for it. It'll be a, a development slash academy team that'll run out at, at midday. Yeah, I suppose um, you know it is what it is in terms of when, when it's certainly not trying to change the competition, but in terms of the way we handle our playing group, we've certainly had feedback from our playing group for a while about, you know, trying to get to every player on the list. And, you know, we're, we're, um, we certainly don't have any guys running around the twos like we had when I was playing footy, um, where you've got, you know, guys are getting a bit long in the tooth. That they're certainly a really young list. And, you know, many of them had uh, been through the Falcons and that type of thing. So um, we felt like we really need to give them the utmost attention, um, not just during the week, um, but certainly on match day. So obviously being joint coaches, and Robbo and I share the responsibilities of coaching the, the senior group and we, the way we do it, we split um, on three-week blocks and um, we're going to, when we're, when we're off, we're not going to be off anymore. We're going to be uh, you know, handling out um, and coaching our seconds side or our development group on the Saturday. So we think that's going to be really positive for our playing group to be getting feedback firsthand from either one of the senior coaches on a match day. And um, so, yeah, we've announced that to the club and the playing group, it's been good feedback so far. And um, we've added in to support that. Obviously, uh, Luke Rayner um, probably not, doesn't need a lot of introduction in terms of Luke and his playing and coaching capability, but Luke's come on board as our senior uh, or our youth junior development coach. So Luke will sort of support both of us on that match day uh, with our seconds program, but also um, during the week, particularly on Monday nights, taking our sort of 17 to 22 year olds for a, an extra session, um, um, depending on what what time of the year, you know, um, that might vary slightly, but sort of getting access to that group and, and really working with them closely uh, through the year. And then obviously just watching them and supporting them through the year, coaching them getting in their ear if they're a bit down or, you know, haven't had a great game or giving them feedback on how they're going. So um, I think look, we're wrapped that Luke's come on board. Obviously, Keaton, his young fellows playing with us as well. So, um, and being with the club for a while, he, we were really happy with how he was going through the pre-season of 2020. There's no doubt in our mind he would have probably played senior footy this year. Um, but uh, coming back from the Falcons and then Cam Loftus, who's been around local footy for some time and, and uh, uh, you know, long time St Mary's sort of person has, has come on board as well to, to sort of look at the junior development program and his role will be to, I suppose, um, try to coach the coaches in our senior game plan. So have a role through our senior group, particularly through pre-season and then really spend good time with our junior coaches, making sure that our, you know, 19s, 17s and, and grades underneath that are all taking some aspect of our game plan and trying to uh, coach them in the same way that we do. So we feel like we've got a, you know, not only a good program and a good uh, structure to it, we feel like we've got some awesome people that have come on board as well to help execute. Yeah. Roy, that whole club focus really future-proofs your club in a way, doesn't it? Yeah, we're try I guess that's what we're trying to do, mate. We know that um, there's certainly a, an intent to help level the competition and we, we, we want to be ahead of that and setting ourselves up as well as we possibly can. So, um, yeah, and I think with the, you know, with Keisty and I both doing the, um, the 12 o'clock game and the development opportunity for us, it, it perhaps puts us more so into the club coach um, scenario where our message is consistent, whether that be you play at 12 or you play at two, uh, gives us additional time with the playing group and hopefully covers off some of the gaps that, um, we thought we had. Yep. Do you see this becoming, Gents, a, a potential model for, and it won't suit everybody, but, you know, if the clubs have got the resources to be able to, to implement as well, you, you're trying to be a bit of a leader, I suppose, and, you know, you'd be innovative and hope that uh, maybe it's a, a path that other clubs look at and only strengthen, strengthens the GFL going forward. Yeah, I think, um, you know, coaching, you know, from when I was coaching, 20 odd years ago, um, that you sort of had a coach and an assistant coach and might have had somebody that was on your match committee that helped you out. Certainly, the, you know, the expectations of, 
um, from players to coaches has become greater over time. And I think that's obviously just filtered down from the AFL. And, um, you know, there's an expectation of greater coaching. And I think it's something that we, we felt that as a club we could, you know, invest in. And that investment of uh, coaching, you know, not just uh, ourselves, but obviously the, the putting the right crew in place to help uh, future-proof the club, as you say, is certainly something that we, we're pretty passionate about, that, that we leave the club in good shape to be successful for, you know, a time to come. So, um, yeah, I, I, whether other clubs follow it, who knows, but certainly, you know, the time to, to coach local footy these days, it's, you know, doing it yourself would be a big big job. We, we're lucky we can uh, share the responsibility and and I think, you know, often you're there watching the seconds anyway, so you might as well be, you might as well actually be involved and um, and be giving, you know, coaching and feedback at that same time as you're watching it. So there's probably some negatives that we, I'm sure, will go through and find through the year. Um, things like things haven't been that way for ever for, for no reason. Um, but, you know, we think that the positives certainly outweigh the negatives for sure. Yeah. Uh, one I want to get your view on, gents, is that, the, I'm sure you're across that the junior structure uh, for AFL Barn will be retained as is for next year, but we'll go back to uh, 18, 16, 14s, et etc. et cetera, from 2022 onwards. Has St Mary's got a position on that? Are they happy with that or were they happy with the way it was? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first because, yeah. um, you know, I've had kids sort of in that age group that's probably been affected. Um, look, I, don't, I, I actually don't think it really matters as long as, you know, I think the... The chopping and changing, I feel sorry for the kids that have been affected by it, you know, whether they've had a couple of years of the bottom major and, you know, their development mightn't have been as great or on the other end, they've been held back in under 19s and they've been ready for senior footy. So I've seen firsthand that some people have been affected by it. And look, it's probably in the scheme of it, not not massive and not major. Um, but, you know, I think that um, the reality is I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer. Um, whatever we do, I think we should stick with it. Trev? Yeah, I think yeah, I agree with what Casey's talking to. I think in terms of uh, what we've implemented too, we're also mindful, Kingy, of what's happening down at the Falcons as well and the flow-on effect of that. So um, ensuring that we've got a really strong program for the development of our younger kids who we know we now know, not that it's completely in concrete on how it's going to, how it's going to work, we now know that they're going to re- require more time within the club and they'll need that um, you know specialized coaching and we we want to be able to give them the opportunity to grow and develop as quickly as they can so that's part of the the motivation for how we've set that up how the the Falcons entirely will will have to wait and see. Yep talking about training gentlemen have you got any indication of when you might start as a, a group, you're allowed, I think, the non-contact groups of 10 and uh, 100 metres apart. Hopefully that gets eased in, in coming weeks by uh, the Victorian government and their regulations. But do you planning to start? Are you happy to just to, to, to hold back and get a, a further loosening of restrictions? You couldn't, you couldn't give him a prod, mate, and ask him to hurry up with some of those regulations, could you? Who, me to Dan? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> if only I had that pull. No, I think... Um... We, it's been a funny one. We, we've um, probably we've changed our minds a couple of times over the last few weeks on this one, but uh, we're going to kick off Monday week. I think it's the ninth, yep. um, but it's not going to be a, it, you know, COVID's changed the world and how we do things on a regular basis. So our preseason is going to look different. Uh, we, we're just going to start with some basically line, line sessions uh, where we, we can get the groups together and, you know, group of 10 and, We'll probably run seven or eight sessions. We're lucky enough; we've got enough coaches that can that can run that. Um, so it'll be a fairly optional sort of thing for the boys, where we just start to probably crawl walk into into a preseason and ensure we get a base into the boys um, at least prior to Christmas. Again, we don't know what the season looks like. I assume it's going to start in April if our state stays fairly stable in terms of cases and how we manage that. So it's hard to really lock down too much. But uh, what I do know is, what well, I guess, what we've all experienced, and, and I can't speak to people that have lived in Melbourne, but we all love social interaction. So, and I know all our boys in all age groups are, are craving an opportunity to get together and, and do something. So, we'll kick off in a couple of weeks and give them an opportunity to get together again. 
Yep. Uh, boys, have you had the conversation with your players? Obviously, you know, salary cap's gone from 145 to 100. Um, obviously, nobody knows what anybody spent, but I suspect that you guys will have to reduce what you're spending. Have, have those conversations gone with players? But are they a little bit easier when you're at a club that's experienced success and in the window of success that blokes are happy to take a little bit of a haircut because they know that, you know, they're, they're going to be part of a team that's going to legitimately challenge for a premiership for, for coming years? Yeah, oh, look, King, I think, um, you know, uh, I, I agree. I think different clubs will be in different positions in terms of their list and, and the, you know, the experience, but also, um, you know, in terms of success and so forth. It's just been a non-factor for our guys. So they've been really good in terms of accepting what it is. And the reality is everybody's going to have to share the pain or share in the, the opportunity that's there. So um, it's just been a pretty non-eventful conversation, to be honest, um, in terms of I think everybody just wants to get playing footy again. And, and that's a side issue to some degree. Yep. Uh, in terms of list changes, uh, Zach Sherman uh, was lucky enough to speak with him last week after it was revealed he would be uh, coming back to St Mary's. He's run a marathon. Uh, I think he ran it with Paddy Cleary and Johnny Fazio, and they covered the link out to Gazapur Road and had a couple of blokes supporting with the, the water and the gels and the like. Um, does Zach have a? I know, Keith, you spoke to the Addy, but does Zach come back with a bit of a point to prove um, after obviously the way his 2019 season ended? Yeah, I, I, you know, we've obviously spoke to him and had lots of conversations over the course of the last, um, you know, probably month or so. But he's, um, yeah, I don't think he's coming back with a point to prove. He's a bona fide, you know, really top line GFL player. He was influencing games up until, you know, he got injured against Colac in, I think, round 16 or something, 15 it was. So, um, you know, he, Colac that day were absolutely worried about what he was doing and how he was going about it. Now, he probably had, you know, dropped off his fitness over the years and certainly, um, you know, where the shape he's in at the moment, we feel like he's going to come back in, you know, in fantastic uh, condition to, you know, be able to influence games even more so. So, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm sure there's a little fire that burns in his belly about missing out in 2019, especially having been involved in the three... Um, losing ones um, but yeah hopefully that drives him hopefully that's sort of um, some motivation that sits internally but we're, you know I, I personally don't think he's got anything to prove yep. uh, the wonderful career of Andrew Banjanin has come to an end unfortunately yeah the big fella's not going to go on um, it's an interesting one we were talking about the other day that you know we got to the end of 2018 and he was a little undecided and he's his form was okay. Um, he was certainly a really good contributor, but um, we were we were there to support either decision. Uh, but if we had have had the same conversation at the end of 2019, we would have been, you know, we were, we were more than happy for the big fella to go on. He had a great finals campaign. Um, he played some great footy last year. He was a major part of where we ended up. Um, but uh, just the commitment, the impact on his body, um, it's just been too much for him. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, he's not going to play. But, you know, we feel comfortable that he's been a great servant of Samaria's footy club, but we've also got some great young talent um, that's coming through in uh, Sam Conway. We recruited Nick Knott. Um, if you, it um, probably hasn't been, you know, spoken about too much because, um, unfortunately for him, for him, he hasn't played a lot of footy given his knees. But uh, he was ready to go in 2020. He had played pr practice matches and, and looked pretty good. So... We've got a bit of stock to support the absence of Banjo. Got a question for you, gents. That um, you know, it's up to you guys how you you answer it. But the um, AFL Barnes deal with Cadinia Park has come to an end in terms of GMHBA Stadium and finals. There's some talk of going back to community grounds, but I've got a sneaking suspicion you two wouldn't be upset if we stayed at Cadinia Park. Is that a, a fair call? <laughs> uh, I look up. Yeah, we're um, we'd we'd love to stay at Cadinia Park, but uh, yeah, it is it is what it is. I suppose there's benefits I can see um, either side, but certainly having been involved in both, I think there's you know, in terms of if we live in Geelong, we've got a an AFL ground standard. Um, I don't think there's a better way to finish your season than being able to run around on the best ground in in the city in the city. So. 
that would be my position. Uh, why not? Why would we want to not play on it? Yep. You did play in some great grand finals, Keisty, at West, and the one that sticks out is 96 against West Saints. Um, it was just a cracking day, massive crowd, and the atmosphere was electric that day in a grand. Do you think of those days as well and go, gee, there's the benefits of also playing on a, a suburban venue? Yeah, I actually had dinner with um, Dave Lolat and Daryl Fenton last Thursday night, and um, we didn't get to the 96 grand final. We didn't really have that conversation. We were talking more about our our children's 2000 and, uh, well, 2012 uh, under-12s grand final that we all <laughs> helped uh, coach. But, uh, um, yeah, no, they, they were fantastic days and, you know, you, you fond memories of the, the ground and, um, you know, you could literally feel the crowd sort of hanging over the fence in, in many ways. So, um, yeah, as I said, I, I wouldn't be dead against it. There's lots of positives in playing at those community grounds and, and um you know, I think that, uh, yeah, I, I'd support either way, but certainly my p- personal pr- preference would be that uh, you play on the best ground you can. Robo, we've talked about Shermo and Banjo, some ins and outs. Anything else we need to be aware of or be bracing ourselves for from St Mary's? Anything you're going to deliver a knockout blow recruiting-wise in coming weeks? We'd, li- we'd like to hope we'll deliver a knockout blow. I think uh, the fact that uh, some of the you know, points sort of solutions were released a little uh, that helps helps um, free up a little bit of points balance. But uh, look, we're, we're probably like every other club. We've got, um, I think for us at the minute, we're, we're fairly pointed with what we what we want to get. Um, look, I've, I've, I was having, having a chat to Macca, Newtown coach, the other day. I, I've no doubt that it's going to get tight uh, because the, the spill out of good talent um, from AFL, VFL, uh, is going to happen, but it's it's going to come late for all of us because there's such uncertainty for all of them still. So I'm sure most coaches are having similar conversations that we're ha- that we're having. It's um, yeah, I'm not really where you get the answer. I'm not really sure. Not really sure what's going on. I've got A, B, and C as an option. Um, yeah, look, we're after um, you know, some quality still. Mate, there's, we we want to improve the list and push our list and keep developing and keep getting better. So. We're going to try. Scott Selwood would have been a six-pointer this year. What value does he become when he's been a runner for a year for an AFL club? <laughs> he's yeah, I'm not sure. I'm no. not sure about Scooter whether we'll actually ever see him again. But um, yeah, hopefully he's got out of Queensland. I'm sure we'll, we'll see him at some point. But um, oh. yeah, if he wanted to have a kick, we'd be happy for him to have a run around. Yeah, I'm sure there's a spot for him at twelve o'clock. He'll, I'll let Robbo tell him that. He'll one. be well coached. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you worked out who's first on and first off with the the three weeks, or is that does that just unfold naturally? Uh, we, we, oh. we we started uh, 2018, so um, so we we had a we had a system in 18, a system in 19, and we'll um, I'm assuming we'll just count 2020 like everybody else that it didn't happen, and we'll roll on to 2021. So. Yeah, we'll, uh, I think Robo kicks it off and we'll go from there. So I'll, I'll get the duties of uh, the 12 o'clock game for the first three weeks, which will be fun. All right. I think that's fair enough. I think what he what he failed to mention there, Kingy, was uh, he kicked us off for 2019 and it wasn't a very good start. So <laughs> we, need to, we need to shift it up a bit. I think yeah, we forget well, it. We won't, we won't talk about the end, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the question I've got for you, though, is... What happens if you've got the ones and the twos in on grand final day? Yeah, that's. I think that's where Keisty was. That's some of the things we've thrown up as what are the negatives of what we're we're about to do. So we're we're prepared to work through the negatives because that's a false negative, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's it is. Great, great result to um, have to deal with. I'm sure, we, as I said, we've got great people around the club, so we'll make some we'll make some work if we're we're all in the granny. Then good luck to us. Yeah, absolutely. Gentlemen, absolute pleasure to talk with you both. Uh, wonderful system that's coming out of St Mary's, obviously. But uh, to hear that what you're going to do with your role and uh, have you co- coaching across uh, both the uh, open age teams is a, a wonderful initiative and one we're more than happy to talk to you guys about. Keisty, great to see you in good health and uh, have obviously five months on uh, been able to get yourself back on your feet and uh, in, uh, in fine fettle as well. Back to fighting weight almost, looks like. <laughs> Yeah, no, doing good, mate. Thank you.
Nah, good stuff. And Rob, always a pleasure to talk with you. This is the second Zoom we've done, and I think you probably want to keep it that way and you can avoid me throughout the year. No, I'm more than happy to have you down, King. Last time I did actually see you in person, you were in fine form. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. What was I doing? <laughs> Maybe we in the, you might have been in our rooms after we won the, um, after oh, we won the game. And, oh, yeah. You know, your, your sculling form's pretty good, I reckon. Uh, smash well when, when the when the 22 players and the support staff start chanting skull guess what you skull yeah, it's fairly intimidating isn't it yeah it was the only beer i had that day actually so i was pretty proud of myself on that yeah. wish you could say it's time for the others yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen always a pleasure to talk footy with both of you and uh look forward to uh, speaking to you with you more and hopefully talking to you about a, a season in 2021 thanks for thanks, your talk.